works, and then you get mm -hmm. crushed back to back. Yeah, I certainly feel felt like the last game that was a very important game in this series. Um, before the series, I was pretty confident in Paul, and I mean in us. Right now, I'm not too sure, but hey, it's whirlwind. It's a big map. It could. Oh, you actually crashed out of the game. I'm not sure if that's the end of the world. Either way, the fourth map is going to be played on uh, whirlwind. I'm not sure if we're going yeah. to re it or not. But yeah, I think if you're a Paul fan, you're feeling pretty good at the moment, Sean. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. Uh, honestly, like. This is going to be a very, very difficult map for Oz, but it's one where he does have a little bit of breathing room. Up in the top right-hand corner, currently down 1-2. He desperately needs your support. Can he pull a win against the most terrifying TDP of late? From EG, it is Oz. And his opponent, you know him, you love him. He's the best player who's also American. <laughs> From Cooler Master Storm, it is Holt. It has already been such an impressive run for Paul, being the reigning champion of WCS Season 2. The only player that got this close to defending his WCS title was Meru in Korea. Meru was not able to do it. Uh, Paul is looking very good so far. And it looks like he's also gearing up to go command center first. I generally like this play on this map. This is also a spot where, as Protoss, I really like just to zell it first mm. before uh, for the cybernetics core. It's, it's a little bit of an unusual play, but so many people, like every matchup, everyone goes for, you know, HQ first at Expo. Mm -hmm. And then we do see that command center first going down. Also is going to scout it immediately. He might even be uh, able to be annoying with this probe as long as possible, which would be useful because he's going to force Paul to pull one, maybe even two additional SCVs, so he's going to lose a little bit of mining time. And then I am very curious to see if he's going to make a Zealot, make a Stalker, and make a Monastery Core and run straight across the map. But we saw on Eklund Ways, which is even a smaller map than this one, um, that Paul throws down that bunker immediately, and he doesn't ever want to lose the game uh, in a silly way against the first three units that Protoss can throw it in. Yeah, Paul is so good at just... You know, it's kind of funny. It's one of those rules that you want to you want to tell a new player, don't get overly eager with defense. You want to be doing things to your opponent, not just trying to hold off what he can do. And that pretty much stays true all the way up until you get to around Paul's level, where he's so good at predicting every little thing and always having an answer. Sure, he might not get his third barracks up as fast, oh. or his two geysers up as fast, but he's just impenetrable. You go DT, he has a turret. You go for the early push, he has a bunker already. For a second, I thought he wasn't actually building this barracks because I didn't see the SCV and I didn't see it gain any life either, but uh, I was wrong. My eyesight isn't as good as it used to be when I was young <laughs> and beautiful. Yes, now that you are a haggard old man, <laughs> I you know, are forced man. to just cast StarCraft, you poor thing. I put on my red dress and it's still not good enough. Oops. <laughs> um, Oz is uh, answering in the most economic way possible. After he threw down that gate, he decided not to uh, mine any gas until we, just, uh, until we could wipe in that nexus. And after that, he just went on to mining gas immediately. So we're going to see a very economic opening from both players. And once more, I think we're going to see Oz go for a pretty quick blink, because that's kind of just like his go-to thing. He likes to be active with blink stalkers. I felt the way he set himself up early game and the amount of probes that he built last game on Young Tzu was beautiful. I actually felt that everything yeah. uh, uh, up to a certain phase in the game was going very well for Oz, and I really liked the way he was playing and the way he was executing his early game micro. It was all oh, good, up until that one doom drop where you know, it kind of just snowballed out of control. So it looks like a forge is going to be going down at five minutes, which generally means that there's also going to be around a six minute or sometimes five and a half minute robo bay. This is a very common way to transition into a Templar based defense. And I'm, I'm just super happy to see Oz doing something a little bit more passive instead of trying to attack. This is kind of a bad early attacking map. There's no good way to blink up into the main base in a way that will really shock and awe the mm. Terran player. It's almost impossible even, that's why you rarely see it here. Mm -hmm. uh, he's indeed just going to rely on the upgrade advantage. We saw Hero play a PvT earlier today on Whirlwind as well against Heart, and he also preferred to open up with High Templars. And yeah, the robotics facility will go down, but it could still be um, just for a couple of observers just to be safe, because uh, Paul also actually never opens up with a, uh, with a factory or a quick Widowmine drop or something. It just doesn't really mm -hmm. seem to be something that he really favors. I mean, really he, he, he once upon a time was big on it, but I guess now the, the, the thralls of standard have overtaken him. 
<laughs> I do love, love, love this opening that we're seeing out of Oz. You know, it's almost difficult to really talk about what Polt's doing because he just is not going to do anything unique or different <laughs> or amazing at yeah. the start of the game. He's just going to go three barracks. He's, I'm, oh, I was getting a second bunker just in case. You know, he saw a late Mothership core. He doesn't really know what's up with that. Twilight Council is going down. First Observer is on the way, and a couple of additional gates are going down. Uh, Oz has been doing a good job in chrono boosting out as many probes as possible as he has a comfortable and healthy worker lead for this stage of the game. Doesn't really mean that he is ahead or anything because uh, of course two orbital commands will give you quite a bit of additional income but it shows that he's been doing a good job. It would be a bad sign if there were evening workers. <laughs> yeah, chrono boost going to waste. There's a lot of little cute things that I love out of uh, uh, th this opening from Oz where even though he's getting the early armor he's still really chrono boosting his probes making sure that this is an economic game. And interestingly, is still just going straight in for Blink and then straight into the Colossus, but now it has a real purpose. It's not a good attack map, but it is a great defending map. And it looks like he's gonna be going for around a 10 minute third. Yeah, I think we're gonna see something like that. Blink is halfway done. He's gonna spot this uh, small bio hit squad marching across the map. By the time that these units uh, will make their way across the map, if Fold actually wants to commit to that, Stim is about to finish up, uh, but there should be enough gateway units. Actually, there will be more than enough gate gateway units with Photon Overcharge as well. So far, so good for us. Robobay is about to finish up. He can start producing Colossus. Um, we will see. Keep a close eye, of course, on Paul when he decides to drop mm, that yeah. third command center because that is uh, very telling of what his plans are. Yeah, it looks like he'll be throwing it down any second now. Just doing the usual advance forward. A couple stalkers there to greet, and it looks like the Nexus is not yet going down. I mean, this is what's so great about this push timing. Medivacs are only just now getting close to finishing. It's kind of cool how much it forces Oz to stay back and chill on the main base. Mm. This is kind of a, the way that I see this game is just like very standard how Heart of the Swarm just came out and Protoss players were kind of afraid to take uh, three bases very early on because it was so hard to deal with the new Medivacs with the Ignite Afterburners. Oz is still going to take it relatively quickly. It's just a few seconds later than the one of um, Paul. He's going to have to worry about this little hit squad though. It's not amazingly strong but 22 Marines and 6 Marauders can kill a base extremely fast and oh my god this is so unfortunate for us. He walks oh. it in. He might see it though. He might still be able to keep it alive because Paul doesn't know what we know. And oh, you're going to need those units, Oz. Oh, Oz doesn't Oz, know what we down. know. Oz has no idea. I mean, rarely are you going to be inspecting the rocks at this point in time, but there he sees it. He's moving in. He's dodging a bullet here, that's for sure. And this is going to be a big advantage if Oz engages. He has there blink not stalkers a lot of units. as well. He's got blink. He's charging in there. No, he blinks back. That's the wrong way. Blink forward, pick off those medevacs. I mean, a, a single Colossus with Guardian Shield and the plus one armor. I mean, that is a near impossible army to take down early game. I think he's perhaps a little afraid that these blinks are, uh, were a little eager in the previous games. And if he blinks on top of a few Marines and Marauders, sure, he might be able to pick off a medevac or two. But if he loses the Stalkers, then he's going to have to invest gas again into units that he rather doesn't. Uh, uh -oh. But this is a great moment to attack, though. There's not a single Viking out. How many say he can actually force through this army out as well. What a great little attack here by us. Uh oh, oh, and there's one, two, three. Force fields go down, locking everything out. We're seeing some excellent control. Single Viking arrives to try to pick down the Colossus, but Zealots are going to arrive and just essentially be fodder for that Marine Marauder troop. It's time to run. It's time <laughs> to run as fast as you possibly can. Oz definitely lost a few units there, but he did force that command center to stop transforming into an orbital command. But in the long run, he did lose the sentries, the Zealots, and this Colossus. So you could say that it was still a successful hold for Paul. But what Oz did successfully do is slow this Terran economy down a little bit. I'm not sure if it were, was worth it, but I did like the idea a lot. Yeah, I mean, right now they're dead even in terms of the worker count. Templar are popping up. And of course, in production, we're no doubt going to see that very early trio of barracks pumping Pult all the way up to eight barracks. That is where he really kicks into gear. He's at five right now, and there it is. God, that is early. At 13 minutes, right on schedule. Mm. 66 against 58 army supply. The High Templars are very early to the party though. Do we have Storm already? Uh, let me just take a look. Yeah, actually he already finished up researching Storm. I didn't expect him to do that quick. He's also on plus two armor already, so he has a nice upgrade advantage. It's basically going to be a 1-2 Protoss army against a 1-1 Terran army with Blink, with Storm. And despite losing a few units early on, I really think that Oz 
is once more setting himself up in a reasonable position in this phase of the game. Yeah, Oz is, is just a genius uh, at rapidly switching to like 50 different forms of tech, but to be able to do that, that, that just stinks. I mean, uh, to, to, to be able to set yourself up with that many different tech paths, what's the only way you do it? Well, you just cut units. That's the one thing that we're seeing Oz missing. He doesn't have enough to be able to position. Oz is trying to bring the noise to Pult, but Pult is going to be doing the counterattack drop. Is a storm going to be enough? It does land. Overcharge does go down. A lot of great storms going down on the other side of the map as well, but does Oz really have the units here to straight up kind of win the game? Because he does have to worry about his main. Paul is going to focus down this Nexus. This Nexus is going to fall, and Oz really needs to deal a lot of economic damage on the other side of the map to make this worth it. Oh my god, it looks like Oz is just charging in. That is a huge pack of Zealots about to charge up the front, and Oz is actually going to go for it. He has an upgrade advantage. He has a couple of high Templars as well. That's a reasonable storm, but there are so many SUVs that can be used as meat shield as well. Is Paul going to be able to hold? Up in the main base, we see that everything has been eviscerated. Pult has lost his front. How does Pult break through in this position? It looks like Oz is just going to march right up into the main base. We see that there's a limited amount of Marine Marauder up there, but it's Stormer. will be able to engage that. Three Templars still on the field. Wow, another excellent storm. Another excellent pair of storms from Oz. With a crazy counterattack, game sacking his main. Is that the correct play? Paul has lost so many SUVs, and he might not actually have the damage to kill these Archons. Oz made perhaps the correct call after all, killing all these SUVs. Wow, GG! And he is going to win on Whirlwind. Wow, <laughs> that was a very ballsy decision to not go back, not try to deal with that yeah. draw, but just go all out and win the game. His reinforcement pilot was somewhere at like the sixth base, was so far away. He had to win the game with that little army, and he did. I mean, who needs a main base when you can do that? <laughs> I mean, Oz just has incredible decision-making. Like you were saying, noting that his 2-1 was done mm -hmm. and that he had an up 